In today's video, I'm going to show you an exercise that is going to fix your time in a way that you maybe never thought possible. Time and rhythm are probably the most immediate thing that can get you a no vote in an audition. If your tempo isn't stable or if you're rushing, you know, fast notes, uh, if your rests are too long or anything like that, the committee can hear it right away. On the other hand, if you're playing with good time, then it can just feel great. When the listener hears stability and feels like you're playing right in the pocket, then they can just trust you and focus in on the music and the phrasing. It's a relief as a listener when someone is just locked into the tempo. Most musicians think that they're playing with good time, or at least that they're playing with good enough time to advance, maybe you actually do a lot of practicing with the metronome, um, and actually that can be a, a false sense of security. You know, you've probably been taught that if you just play a lot with the metronome, you know, you're supposed to have a great time, right? But it just doesn't seem to work out, and it can feel confusing why your time isn't better after working a lot with the metronome. You know, you put your metronome on quarter notes or something like that, and then you follow along. And that's the key word, follow. When you play with a metronome like that, the skill you're teaching yourself is to follow the metronome. But then you take the metronome away, and suddenly you're all over the place. And that's because you didn't teach yourself the skill of having stable, trustworthy, metronomic time inside your brain. You taught yourself to follow an external click which happens to be a useless skill when you're not playing with the metronome. So we just need to find an exercise that's going to teach you to build an inner subdivision, you know, calibrated to the metronome, but that works even without the metronome. When the metronome leaves and you have nothing to hold on to, then you will have built a trustworthy, laser precise, constantly ticking internal metronome. And by the way, just to be clear on my terminology, I think of time and rhythm as different. Time is comparing your notes to the underlying tempo, while rhythm is comparing the length of a note to the length of another note. So if you're rushing or dragging, that's time. If you come in late after a rest, that's time. If you're swinging, like if there's inconsistent lengths of the notes, then that's rhythm. Um, if certain notes are crushed in a group, that's rhythm. I did a video about building machine gun even rhythms that you can check out here, or I'll put the link in the description below. But this exercise is about building exactly stable tempo without any rushing or dragging. So I call this exercise the occasional beat exercise. The end goal is to play your excerpt along with the metronome that's only clicking on either the downbeats or every other downbeat or very occasionally. So when the metronome is clicking so infrequently, you can't just follow the quarter notes. You can't hear a quarter note and say, oh, that's a bit behind or ahead of me, so I'll adjust to it. You have to actually build your own internal subdivision. And the metronome just occasionally pops up to test whether your subdivisions have been correct this entire time. Oh, and also I forgot to mention that if you want to get a PDF of my most effective practice strategies, you can download that at robnopper.com slash strategies. I put my five best practice strategies in there that you can use when preparing your excerpts for auditions, including for time, rhythm, phrasing, dynamics, and musicality. Again, that website is robnopper.com slash strategies. Okay, occasional beat exercise step one. We can't just jump into playing with the metronome because then we'll just be guessing where the notes go. We have to first build this inner tempo. Uh, and once we have built it, then we can start taking baby steps towards the final goal, which is playing along. And so I actually, I start away from the instrument for this. So I start by putting my metronome on just every downbeat. Um, and I'll just snap my fingers or tap the desk or tap my foot or click my tongue. Um, with each metronome click. So we're going to be working on Rimsky-Korsakoff Capriccio Espanol, the snare drum excerpt. I'm just going to show you how I do it to that excerpt. The normal tempo for that is quarter note equals 125. So we are going to have the click happen every other downbeat.
While you're doing this, two things to think about here. One, the subdivision has to go somewhere in your body, usually. Maybe it's a tongue click or a toe tap or a head nod, little inner breath or a combination of those. Um, and two, you'll notice that at first, the metronome clicks before or after you get there. And that means your internal subdivision between clicks was not accurate. The only way to make the snap, your snap, line up with the click is by building strong underlying subdivisions. And you can't get there by guessing. If the click lands later than you're expecting, then the next time around, try feeling your subdivisions a little wider. Every time the click is early, then crush the length of your subdivisions. This is the actual work of the exercise, you know, stretching and crushing your subdivisions until they are exact and precise. You're done with this exercise when you're so locked into your tempo that your snap and the sound of the metronome are so together that you can't tell the difference anymore. Once you achieve that, where they sound like they're the same instrument or if they're from the same sound source and you also feel like you can go forever and never not line up with the beat, then you're ready to move on. So it usually takes me like three to five minutes, but just keep going and keep trying until you get there. All right, step two. At this point, you've built a great underlying subdivision, but only in complete isolation. Anything might distract you, and that includes simply executing that note on your instrument. So we need to carry the excellent version of your subdivision carefully through to the excerpt by building one little step at a time. This next baby step is just gonna replace the snap with one note on your instrument. So find the notes that line up with two metronome clicks. Take a second to get the subdivision back in your head and play the correct pitch, volume, sticking, fingering, bowing uh, that you're gonna play for just the notes that line up with the first click and the second click. So play along with the click and repeat it until it's completely locked in, just like before. Step three is just to add one note at a time, each time making sure that you're locked in with the metronome. So start with the note on beat three, and then beats two and four, and keep going until you've built in all the notes in that whole passage. So here's me adding just beat three, or in this case, the note directly in between those two clicks. And here's me adding, you know, the remaining beats two and four. And then you just keep adding notes until the section is complete. All right, so once you get this measure or this section, then you can do it to one or two other sections to make sure that you are really locked in with this subdivision, that your inner pulse can keep going regardless of what kind of material you place over it. I did this to the whole excerpt, so let's compare what the before and after sound like. Here's the before to remind you. And then here's the after. That is now pretty good. 
If you do this, I promise you that you will get better comments on your time and that time won't be a reason for a committee member to vote no for you. Most musicians don't come close to this level of precision with their time. So if you are willing to go through the frustration and um, you know heartache of doing this process and just sticking with it until you're good at this, then you will be handsomely rewarded. All right, again, the five practice strategies is something that could be really helpful for you, and you can download that at robnopper.com. Um, if you try this, please comment below and let me know what excerpt you worked on, how it worked. If you have other strategies to work on time, please let me and others know in the comments, um, and I'm happy to answer any other questions there for you too. If you thought this video was helpful, um, and if you want me to make more practice strategy videos in the future, hit the like button below, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you in the next video.